When it comes to risk and risk management in our organizations, we're always trying to defend our organization and its assets against risk. We're trying to control it. And guess what? ISACA has come out with three lines of defense for risk. And that means it's time for us to jump in, take a look at these three lines of defense and what they mean to us. All right, three lines of defense. That sounds good to me because if you think about it, when you have a threat coming in or you're dealing with something, if you have a single line here, well, guess what? The odds that this is going to break through the single line, well, they're not terribly bad. But if you put a second line, hey, now we're talking, we're really beefing things up. Throw a third line in there and you're talking pretty stout stuff. Just think about your karate chop like this guy down here. Karate chopping through a single block versus two blocks versus three blocks. That's right. It's going to be harder to go through all three. Therefore, Let's take a look at the first line of defense. The first line of defense is operational management. Now, what does that mean? Well, this is our business unit managers and the employees that they manage. So that is our first line of defense. Now, here's the thing about our first line of defense. What are they expected to do? Well, number one, they need to be aware. And that means they need to be aware of risk. Well, how can they be aware of risk if they don't understand what risk is? That is a good question right there, which means part of this be aware of risk is going to be training because we need to provide training to our managers and to all the employees about understanding information security best practice. So we're talking general security awareness training, but we also want to include risk in that training so they can be aware of risk. Because if they don't understand what it is, they cannot be aware of it. And that is step one. The second thing they're expected to do is implement risk management policies. So there we go, risk management policies. And that's because when we create these policies, who follows the policies? Everybody does, including the employees that are being managed. So if the employees don't have a policy to follow and the training to understand what risk is, well, guess what? All those employees out there are frontline workers. They're not going to be prepared to deal with risk, meaning our first line of defense is going to be weak. And that is not a good thing. So the last thing, number three, that our business unit managers and first line of defense are expected to do is implement and manage controls. So here we go, our controls. Those need to be implemented. And again, one of these controls would be security training and risk training and any other controls that need to be put in place in order to manage risk at this level. And that is our first line of defense. Now, moving on, guess what our second line of defense is? Well, if it's not the business unit managers and our frontline employees, well, it's got to be somebody else, and it is. It's our risk and compliance function. So think of this. When we looked at our org chart in a previous video, we saw we had a risk department and we had a compliance department. And the risk folks were in charge of, guess what? Yes, managing and analyzing risk. And compliance folks did just that. They managed and they analyzed compliance. That's right. Very good. And those were the two departments. And that's who we're talking about right now. This is our second line of defense. And the thing is, the second line of defense is there to actually prop up the first line of defense, to help them out and to give them what they need. So some of the functions of our second line of defense come out to be providing oversight. This is like independent oversight of the first line of defense, which was the business unit managers and their employees. So basically provide oversight. Now here's the thing. What is oversight? Well, it's keeping an eye on things, talking with people, going out, seeing how things are going. How is the training going? Is it working for you? Do you need different training? Would you like some additional training? How can we help you to do your job better? What can we do for you? And that is oversight, helping out and keeping an eye on things. That's the sight part, which is getting out there and talking with folks, communicating with them, because communications is key in the success to everything. 
Secondly, is ensure business alignment. So everything that we're doing within our risk and compliance functions, and again, this is like the risk managers of the organization. They need to make sure that everything in the risk plan, in the risk framework, whatever they're doing is in alignment with the business. And we've talked about that before, and it's their job to make sure that happens. They're also there to develop and oversee the risk management program, as you can imagine, because they are the ones who are doing the risk management program. And again, this is like our risk management department that we're talking about here. So they're there to develop and oversee the risk management program because our first line defense folks are out there following this program. So they've got to make sure that this program is up to date and it's meeting the needs of the organization. And of course, it's in alignment with the organization as well. We can't leave that out. And then they're also responsible to make sure that the individual business functions are in compliance with the risk management policies, standards, and procedures. And this goes back to that oversight we talked about in the first step. They're supposed to make sure that the business functions, the individual units, are in compliance with the risk management as it pertains to the policies, the standards, and the procedures. And then lastly, keep stakeholders up to date. So that means providing reports as needed to keep those who need to know about this. We're talking our senior managers and C-level execs and the boards, whoever is involved in this, to keep them up to date on how the organization is doing as far as risk management and any new significant threats. And that is our second line of defense. So we're talking here our risk management department and our compliance department working together to make sure that our risk management program is as solid as can be and is up to date. And we're working with our first line of defense folks to make sure they have everything they need to do risk management the best that they can. And now it's time for our third line of defense. Now our third line of defense is audits. And that could be internal or external audits. Doesn't have to be internal only, but basically it's audits. It's our assurance department doing their job to help us out with risk. Now, auditors are supposed to do three things, and that is assess organizational conformance with whatever standard that we have chosen to make sure that we're following the standard and we're actually in compliance with the standard. And if we're not, we need to point that out so that we can adjust what we're doing to get back in compliance. The second thing that our auditors are supposed to do is to evaluate our risk management program. And that's because our risk management folks create the program, right? Of course they do. And they work the program and they keep it up to date. And our auditors are there to evaluate the design and the implementation of our risk management program to make sure that it's fitting the organization's need. It's in alignment with the organization's goals and it's getting the job done. And lastly, our auditors are there to evaluate the effectiveness of the first two lines of defense. Because if lines one and two aren't out there doing their job, well, we need to know about it. And that's what the auditors are there to help us out with. So that we can identify holes in the program or holes in people doing what they're supposed to be doing, right? A lack of compliance it kind of is what it comes down to. And we need to identify that so we can fix it. Because if we have holes in our defense, we know that's a bad thing. And that's why we have three lines of defense. Because one line is okay, two lines is getting better, three lines is the bomb. <laughs> and those are our three lines of defense as it comes to risk management. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.